Hey everybody, this is Ryan Smith and you are watching Secret Chord. This is my second interview that I've done on this channel and I'm psyched. This is a band that is making some serious waves now at a very young age. About six years ago, these kids came into Twin Town Guitars to learn how to play their instruments. A handful of years later, they're on tour with Shellac, the band featuring Steve Albini, producer who worked with Nirvana, Robert Plant, and many other musicians. And they've opened for Soul Asylum. They've turned the heads of all kinds of Minnesota musicians and signed a record deal with Kit and Robot Records out of Los Angeles. Their debut album, Sisu, is now out everywhere. Check it out. They were featured in Teen Vogue magazine. This interview will give you some insight into what got them from picking up their instruments, learning to play, getting to where they are now. I really hope you enjoy it. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with these kids and uh, there's a lot we can learn from this. Check it out. everybody, welcome to Secret Chord. With me today, I'm very honored to have the band Loki's Folly. This band is getting a lot of buzz right now. Uh, they've seen a lot of really cool successes in their, in their career so far. They're very young, they're siblings. This interview is going to be a way for everybody watching to be able to learn from their experiences. What did they do? How did they do it? What can we all take away from what they've done? Let's do a little introduction. Um, let's say who you are, what you play, how old you are, and anything else you think might be interesting to our friends here on Secret Chord. <laughs> I'm Nissa, and I play the drums in the band. Uh, I'm 16. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Very nice. I'm Oscar. I play the bass, and I am 12. 12. Wow. <laughs> And uh, that's that's incredible. I, know, I already know your age, but I don't need to be surprised. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. I'm, I'm Andy, and I play the guitar, and uh, I'm 21. 21, awesome. So you guys are super young. Um, you've already done things like you've toured. You've toured with the band Shellac, Steve Albini, Todd Trainer, Bob. Weston, thank you. Uh, amazing band. Uh, of course, many of you know uh, Steve Albini produced a lot of amazing bands, including Nirvana's legendary album uh, In Utero. So they have been asked to tour with them. You've toured with Soul Asylum and Haley. Yeah. Um, tons of great acts. Like yeah. I mean, the list goes on. So you've really accomplished a lot. Oscar, you, I think, are the youngest person to have played First Avenue's main room. And Nissa, you had the previous record. <laughs> Your brother took the new record, but at age 11, I believe you were playing First Avenue's yeah. main room. So incredible. And this you had uh, at 12. So just barely beat me. Yeah, <laughs> just barely beat you, but you guys hold the record. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's talk about how did you guys start playing music? Like what um, what made you want to start and how did you start? Um, well, we both wanted to learn instruments. Both, both being us. Yeah, Annie and Nissa. Right, this, Oscar was... This was when he was maybe five or six. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember when he was there as, as just a little tyke. So, yeah. so you guys wanted to play instruments and you said, yes. hey, did you ask your parents, can I? Can we learn how to play an instrument? Yes, okay. and I wanted to play guitar and Nissa wanted to play drums and we both had the idea of wanting to be in a band at some point. Okay, so you knew when you started to play that maybe the end goal was to be in a band? Yeah. Yeah. Not we, I don't know if we necessarily thought for sure with each other. Yeah, just in general. Just okay. in general, we both thought it would be sure. cool in the future. So then we started taking lessons with a cool person. <laughs> <laughs> so they came into Twin Town Guitars in Minneapolis, a great music store and lesson studio. Yeah. They, we, we started just doing one-on-one -on -one lessons, learning yeah. the instruments. Um, and I remember Oscar seeing you there, like you, you'd be <laughs> kind of coming along, looking like you might be interested someday in, <laughs> in playing an instrument too. And we just learned some of the basics, right? I mean, we yeah. learned how to play the instrument, yes. uh, 101. Yes. Um, 
And then at some point, I remember your mom asking, hey, can the two kids go together in their lessons? Yeah. And then we started moving into the basement of Twin Town, doing lessons together. Yeah. Um, so what can you pass on about what you guys did as a band? How did you learn to play as a band? What kind of things were useful? Maybe what things were not useful? <laughs> yes. Well, I think we had a really great teacher. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's very kind. Which thing. really helped. Did you find learning covers were, were help? Learning was a covers. helpful experience to you guys? Okay. Definitely. And I don't think, I mean, that was all we started off, off with. Yeah. Um, I, I think it was nice too, being that we're in the same house. You know, if you ever have someone, you're like, hey, I want to run through something, you don't have to wait forever, schedule it, or have all the, all of that. So it was nice to be able to have kind of like, in-house motivation. <laughs> in-house, literally, <laughs> literally in-house motivation. Well, that's great. Yeah, but having like a regular schedule with that really helps. Oh yeah. To be able, if you're like always keeping track of things. So you guys did have a re like a regiment or do now, but I know it's harder. Yeah. Like, as like you know, as, yeah. as things get more complex, but. But you had a regimented practice schedule that you yeah. guys could play together. So, yeah. well, that's some good takeaways. So, I mean, the, you know, learning covers, yeah. like finding instruction in some way, having a practice schedule. Yeah. And if yeah. you can, if you can, <laughs> if you can wrangle in your siblings, right, <laughs> then you have an in-house situation, which is really <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Well, that's great. And then, and Oscar, what about you? What What have you found is, has been helpful to you? You got to see your sisters doing a lot of stuff first. So I, I gotta imagine, was that helpful to just be there and be in the environment? Yeah. Oh, good. All right, well, good. <laughs> so that's really great. So so the band, we should say, did exist as a two-piece. Yeah. It, was, it was Annie and Nissa for a while. You guys yeah. did some even some singles as, as a two-piece, and then Oscar joined the band. How long ago have you officially been the bass player of Loki's Folly? Like, well, it was 10 or 11. 10 or 11, uh, yeah, yeah, I think probably. Yeah, right, right. That would make sense. I mean, you yeah. you did your first gig when you were 11, so yeah. I think we started working towards that when you were 10. Let's talk about, you know, you you've you've really turned heads of people in the music scene and people notice what you're doing. Um and I and I will say that I think the one of the reasons is because what you do is unique and you don't sound like you know, you, you could say you draw from influences, but you, yeah. you don't go like, well, Loki's Fall sounds just like Green Day. You can't <laughs> say that. When you write music, when you create music, do you think about that kind of thing? Do you just, how does that work? Well, I guess to pull back to learning all those covers at the beginning, I think that helped kind of exploring different styles and different things that influenced us. Yeah. And then I think also sharing a lot of that. So like, oh, check out this random, band that I just found <laughs> yeah and like sending a link or um or in our case you know running up to each other's bedrooms <laughs> yeah and be like check this out check out this. this music so and then kind of getting to the point where it's like oh I think this song should sound like this pulled with this pulled with this pulled with this other thing we learned yeah. three years ago yeah with something else that we both really like <laughs> that makes total sense so really it's a matter of pulling from at least two different influences together. Cause that's the one thing yeah. is like you, you know, have your own voice as a musician songwriter. Um, and when you pull two different influences, three different influences together, and then it's coming from your perspective, there's something totally different. Even yeah. if you like, you know, consciously say, well, this is really cool. What if we do something? You get excited by yeah. music and inspired by that. I mean, I think there's a great takeaway in that too, just embracing influences, yeah. being yourself. Do you have any advice for people that want to become musicians, whether it be professional, like their career, or they just want to learn how to play? Any advice? Nissa, let's start with you. <laughs> um, I would say if, if you're interested in it to go for it and don't like hold back or get it's hard to it's easier said than done but don't get like held up in the idea that like oh it's this whole big thing that I have to do now I, I don't know if I can do it and only half going it just go into it with with all that you can and <laughs> and uh, I think that makes it easier and in the end more fun to be kind of all in and ready for anything <laughs> yeah oh I, that's that's really good advice and you know you you hit on something you said it, it should be fun i mean you agree that music 
should be fun. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard when it's not. Yes. I feel like, yeah. So maybe in every step of the way, it's like you try to enjoy even something that's like scary. Yeah. Like when you're 12 playing First <laughs> Avenue or 13 going on tour with a legendary band. I'm like, that's, you know, that can be scary, right? But if it's fun, it's, you know, it makes it more, uh, well, palatable for yeah. existence. So, <laughs> right? All right. Well, good. Oscar, what about you? What advice would you have for under uh, 11 or 12 year old bass players that are getting into the, the scene? I don't know. Or older bass players. <laughs> well, what do you like about? I like that. Uh... <laughs> Does it make you be able to express yourself? Yeah. You like it? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. You can play whatever you want. You can play whatever you want, and it's you can be expressive and and find a way to communicate through music. And I've seen you do that, you know, I, and it's and it's great. Um, that's great advice. And 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 you do you love everything about music? Is there anything you, that that bums you out about it? No. Do you, do you always like practicing? <laughs> Sometimes, maybe not, right? Practicing can be... But, it, but is it good to get through practicing? Yeah. It's, it is. Yeah, yeah. You can get better. <laughs> and it's important to make practice fun. I know we talk about yeah. that a lot, too. You want to you know, make practicing engaging and fun and a creative thing. In fact, you know what? Let's take a look at some footage of you guys practicing now. <laughs> this is our rehearsal space here in our basement. Well, that was great, you guys. Thanks for uh, letting us in on a little bit of your uh, rehearsal today. Annie, let's get back to the advice. Do you have any advice for striving singers, songwriter, guitar players, musicians, people that might want to get into this themselves? Yeah. I think along this is line of thinking, you know, not being afraid of like being doing too much or having too much, not, you know, but like not being afraid of like being yourself, I guess. Yeah. Or, you know, like if you're like, oh, I love David Bowie and I want to dress like him, but I don't think I'd be cool enough to do that or something like that to be like, I don't know, just doing things like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just going for it. Going for it, yeah. And 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 you guys, that's another thing I'll say is like your band has a sense of freedom to it that's really cool. And I think that's another thing people have been gravitating towards. Like you don't wor it, it seems like yeah. you feel free and not worried about falling into like a con traditional or a conventional way of doing anything, yeah. which is really great. That's the spirit of music and rock and roll. <laughs> so you guys embody that, it's great. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I hope everybody has enjoyed this interview and found it insightful. Um, don't forget to check out the new album, Sisu. It's out now on Kitten Robot Records. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Hello everybody, welcome to, oh, sorry. <laughs> that was weird. Oh, that was funny. That was really funny. That was hilarious. Uh, we'll put that in the outtakes at the end.